when we were doing inequalities with one variable and we were graphing on number lines, we graph on number lines with inequalities because they don't have just one answer. We solved this problem together a couple months ago and the answer to it was x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Notice when we graphed it, we filled in the circle on negative 2 and we showed everything to the right, including negative 2, would make this statement too. true. If I took 17 and plugged it in for x, would 17 be greater than or equal to negative 2? And so would 16 and a half and 27. Anything including negative 2 to the right makes this statement true. And we don't like to have to write out all those numbers because they go on and on and on. So we just graph them to show. Same idea is true when we're graphing linear inequalities on a coordinate grid. So we're going to start at the beginning, and I want you guys doing this with me. And we're going to talk through how to graph linear inequalities and show their solutions on a coordinate plane. The first thing you need to do is rearrange the equation into what form? And what form is that? Y? We can do the same form, but instead of the equal sign, we're just going to have our inequality sign. What is the first thing I need to move? in this inequality to start getting that y by itself. We want to move that x term, so we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. That leaves us with negative 3 is less than, I'm putting it into this form, so I'm going to put that negative 2x first, oh, no, it's negative. plus 12. Oops, I left my Y off. What's next? What do you guys remember about dividing by negatives with inequalities? So I'm going to have to be dividing this by a negative. I'm going to flip the sign first because that's one of the things that I know I personally forget if I'm doing this fast. So I'm going to set this up like this. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 leaves us with Y. Negative 2 over negative 3 gives us a positive 2 thirds, x minus 4. I'm going to rewrite that because it's a little bit messy. y is greater than 2 thirds x minus 4. And we aren't thinking of that as a fraction because it's our slope. It's telling us our rise and our run. We're going to come down to the next section of our graphic organizer here, and we're going to fill in what is the slope that we get from this equation? 2 over 3. Is it positive or negative? Positive. Do we know what direction that means the line is going to go? Okay. What's our y-intercept? Negative 4. Okay. So that's always how we start. We start with our, our y-intercept. Let's go down and put a point at negative 4. Because it's a point on the graph, it has a coordinate pair, which is 0, ne negative 4. I should be doing this in pencil because I'm making lots of little mistakes. Now, before we can use our slope and find the line, there's a couple of other things you need to know about graphing on a coordinate plane. Just like when we were doing this, do you remember our notes here? We had open circles because those are not included in the answer, and we had closed circles because they are included in the answer. On these kinds of graphs, we have a solid line, and we have broken lines. Solid. What do you guys think the solid is like? Solid. Yeah, it's, including the number on the it's including the number on the line. So this is going to be our um, greater than or equal to or are less than or equal to. Our broken line is going to be just greater than and less than. And I always think of it as I'm using more pencil lead to write this symbol because it has that extra line. So if I'm doing that, I'm going to be filling in my circle on a number line or I'm going to be 
filling the whole line in on a coordinate plane. What kind of symbol do we have here? So we're going to have a dashed line or a broken line for this one. Let's go ahead and start graphing it. We've got our y-intercept. We've got our slope is 2 over 3. We're going to rise up 2 and run over 3. And our line is going to have dashes like this to show that it's broken. When you're caught up with me there, I want you all sitting up straight and tall and looking at the front because I really need your focus for the last thing because it's new. That's not new. These graphs get shaded. The shading shows where all of the answers are. It's like when we did this here and we drew where the right answers were that would make it true. Only this time, we shade above if it's greater than or equal to, or if it's greater than. So if it's greater than, greater than points up. What do you think points down? Yep, less than or less than or equal to. Ooh, because like down below. <laughs> That's kind of a silky line. So this here is what kind of symbol? Greater than. It's greater than. So just take your pencil and you're going to shade this area up here. And this is big, and you guys might want to just watch me do this part and catch it on your notes later, because look at the clock. What we're saying here is any coordinate point, I'm going to use a different color, any coordinate point that falls in a shaded area makes our inequality true. So let me use this one I just did here. This is negative 1, positive 1. So I'm going to say, if I'm checking this, and I'm just randomly using that point there, its coordinates are negative 1, positive 1. So my y is going to be 1 greater than 2 thirds times negative 1 minus 4. Well, what's going to happen with these numbers here? They're all going to be negative. This is 1 is greater than negative 4 and 2 thirds. This is interesting. Is 1 greater than negative 4 and 2 thirds? Yeah. So we just chose any point over here, and I guarantee you any of them would work, but you cannot use the ones on the line because it's not greater than or equal to. When the line is solid, the points on the line work as well. Okay? Mm -hmm. We will continue that tomorrow with some practice. Again, making, we're going to fold this. It'll end up looking like this. Don't stress about it. Don't even try it. Just don't lose it.